Hello, I'm Esther Emery. I'm the homestead wife over at the DIY and homesteading channel, Falchomatic Off Grid. But today you're on my personal channel and today I'm going to be just telling a story. The Homestead Skill of the Month Club is still alive and well and indeed there are constant um, updates as far as sharing information and skills for the homesteading life. But it's almost spring here. We had a, a sort of a surprise snow this morning, um, but it's not very cold. And it's time for me to start doing my outdoor chats as I used to do on Thursdays. So this is a bit of a Thursday talk to share today, even though it isn't Thursday. I'm particularly inspired today to address the issue of in defense of doing hard things. I feel like I am someone who has done hard things for good reasons and hard things for bad reasons. Um, and I'm definitely a child of, of someone who did hard things and has a great legacy to show for it. And I wanted to, to chat a little bit today and share some stories in defense of doing hard things. Well, so this comes, as it often does, from a moment of insecurity or questioning. I tend to become tired in the spring. It happens to me often in the spring um, that, I, that I find myself spinning like a hamster on a wheel, just going fast and not necessarily having sorted out all of my directions. Sometimes I'm just running. And um, I went to Lawana's house last week Luana is one of our, our frequent guests on the Skill of the Month Club um, who taught us how to roast a chicken and how to um, make oatmeal raisin cookies. And I went to her house last week to do yogurt. Um, and as we were doing the yogurt tutorial and a mozzarella cheese tutorial as well, um, I found myself so tired in the process that there just wasn't a great deal of joy in it. And I realized that um, as much as I uh, appreciate Lawana and as much as, as we enjoy each other's company, I needed to rearrange what I was doing at that moment so that we could remember to be having fun as opposed to working hard to hit some kind of um, some kind of, of goodness knows what kind of uh, requirements or obligations for my life. This is of course a cycle in my life. This is a bone that I chew because I am someone who's very motivated and very active and I like to do things and I like to do things well. But almost always I get onto some kind of agenda, I get onto some kind of, of um, goal and accomplishment and almost always, somewhere along the way, the goal itself becomes an idol, and I lose track of why I'm doing it in the first place. Misery loves company. You've heard it said that misery loves company. You know what else loves company? Inaction loves company. The, uh, our laziest selves love company. So it certainly is a human thing and something that I certainly would do to say, I don't want to take responsibility for such and such about, for example, my food supply or how I'm living my life, um, how I'm interacting with other groups of people. I don't want to take responsibility for that. And so I am going to promote the notion that it isn't possible. I'm going to promote that notion for myself and for others, that it isn't possible because if as long as it isn't possible, I don't have to do it. Well, the trick is that there are two extremes here and, and, and the middle is, is a pretty slippery spot. <laughs> so between the, I'm not going to do hard things because I'm going to pretend that they're impossible because I don't want to do them anyway. And then over here, the, I'm doing so many hard things that I can't remember why. <laughs> and so how is it that I need to kind of zero in, I need to find this razorback almost between these two slopes that I can so easily fall down. 
It's so easy for me to say of a hard thing, a valuable thing, a vital thing. Too hard, impossible, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna have a club, in fact, that says, that's too hard, that's impossible, I'm not going to do it, or why would you bother? Because I'm going to be more comfortable not trying. And then this other slope that's just as easy for me to fall down, where I'm working so hard to accomplish something that it's easy for me to lose track of why, and in fact find that I'm spinning my wheels. I'm still doing the work. I'm still being active. But I've lost track of the actual challenge, that internal challenge, that made the work what it needed to be to actually accomplish what it needed to accomplish. I'm speaking in very esoteric terms because I think this applies to almost anything that you would want in life. I am a person who for a long time had a dream of writing a book. Um, when I was a teenager, I wrote it in my journal. I'd like to be a writer. Someday I'd like to write a book. Well, it turns out that writing a book is pretty hard. Um, maybe it was harder for me than it might have been for some other people, but it was pretty hard. And so trying to pursue that, I had both of these slopes. The, oh, this is impossible, it's too hard, it's not worth it, and the, I'm working really hard at it, but somehow I'm not getting it done. Both of those kind of wrong choices that I could fall out on happened to me while writing a book. I am someone who lives off-grid on a homestead. Now this is definitely a place where we have both of those slopes where my husband and I have often heard and sometimes said um, like this kind of lifestyle change isn't worth trying, isn't worth doing, um, maybe doesn't help anything. Um, and then also times where we have uh, moved pretty blindly. Um, certainly been doing something, um, but without always the, uh, the particular um, awareness of what we're accomplishing. So I'm sitting here today and I'm working through these threads. I'm working through, I'm trying to spin this into something that makes sense. And I believe in this messy process. I believe in wandering the way that you have to. And if you know that you're off track, then you get yourself back on track. And if you don't know that you're off track, then you keep going and you do your best. And this is how I believe in living a meaningful life moment to moment. Because you know what the worst thing is? The worst thing is showing up 20 years later and saying, I didn't ever try. I didn't try to write that book. I didn't try for that self-sufficient life. I didn't try to fix this relationship. I didn't try to step out and become who I wanted to be or who I already truly inside was. I'm, and I'm not advocating an irresponsibility. I'm talking about what is somewhere in the middle, in that tension between it doesn't matter and I don't understand it. In between, I can't possibly do it and I'm overdoing it. In the middle, there's this messy tension of life. And I think it's, it's sort of disappointing to find out that there wasn't ever a fairy tale ending. There wasn't a fairy tale answer. It didn't, there wasn't a completion point. Um, and yet, to look at it and say, when I add up these pieces, when I add up this moment of being fully present with a dream, and this moment of being fully present with what felt like a failure, and this moment of allowing myself to tell the truth about what I really want, and this moment of allowing myself to be vulnerable and tough, and caring about my life, about the, the responsibilities that I have, about how to accomplish my dreams. That, that is the kind of hard thing that I want to defend. I think of these things in terms of seasons. I said that I, I, this often happens to me in the spring. And yet I also know people who are very um, renewed in the spring, who find the spring is their strongest time. I know that for me, I will be strong in the fall. I become very grounded in the fall. I become very aware. Food preservation is my, is my favorite time of year. And the, the organizing and the putting up and preparing for winter is something that I thrive in and do well. And then every spring, I feel this kind of chaos of, I don't quite know where I am. I don't quite know which is important. Where do I put my focus? And I have this, this distraction 
that's just a part of what it is to be me. And I do dream, of course I dream of that finish point when I'm going to be all worked out and all together and these things won't happen to me anymore and I'll never have a hard spring ever again. But I think I'm now old enough to realize that I'll have some degree of this again and again. And the triumph is not that I've negated it, that I've cut away that piece of myself that gets distracted and confused in the springtime and can't set priorities. I don't need to cut that part of myself away, but to embrace it, fold it in, and realize that it's a part of a cycle that renews. It's a part of a process that I can continue, that I can continue to thrive. So it's springtime here and my uh, mama duck is getting lots of good greens. We're letting the goats out a bit to get their greens as well. This, this snow will not stick. We've been able to do one, one solid good day putting siding on the house and look forward to several more days of that work this week. And I'm, ba I'm battling some, some of these uh, and I definitely am battling some insecurities and some confusions. Battle is maybe too strong of a word. Maybe just facing. And I thought, I want to sit down today. I want to take a minute to comb through the tangles. Go through this process of combing through the tangles, which is a funny metaphor because my hair is as long as it has ever been. And it does feel a little bit like a mountainside. That's actually not true. My hair was quite long when I was a teenager, but I've not had this long of hair ever in my adult life. And it does feel a little bit like I have a mountainous curly uh, a mountainside here on my head worth combing through. So I want to defend this process of combing through the confusion. I want to defend this process of not always knowing where you're going. I want to defend this process of doing hard things. Sometimes you will overshoot. Sometimes you will be doing something and you'll be working hard at it and you'll wake up and you'll say, you know what, that wasn't right. That wasn't the thing I meant to be doing. Maybe my heart was in the right place, but I just wasn't, I wasn't solid on it. And sometimes you'll wake up and say, the thing I'm doing is too hard. I need to back off. I need to be kinder to myself. I need to, um, I need to give this another go, either with more support or with a different set of, of, of a different kind of awareness. But the reason I'm sitting here today and the message that I most want to communicate is that these are not deal breakers. These are not things that say, don't try. Don't try to do the hard thing. Don't try to be who you want to be. Don't try to accomplish the, the life of integrity or compassion that you're struggling for. These are signposts, they're goalposts, they're, they're scenery along the way. And it's a journey that's not going to be over until it's over. I'm so grateful for the people who hang out with me and I'm so grateful for the people who share this wisdom that um, life really is a journey. It's a journey, moment to moment and place to place. And that's not something that we need to be ashamed of. That's not something that we need to be afraid of. So I am speaking to everybody in the world, but of course I'm also speaking to those who are interested in homesteading or the self-reliant life. If you are building skills in a world in which there is a great deal of money and energy spent to contribute to our feelings of inadequacy, a whole industry of commercials and advertising to contribute to our feelings of helplessness and inadequacy, if you are someone who is working against that, working against that trend and sometimes you fall over on the one side of doing the impossible and sometimes you fall over on the other side of doing something and not knowing why. I want you to know that I defend that. I defend that process. We are not wasting our time. We are not wasting anything. We are doing the work of being human. We're doing the work of doing the best we can in a very difficult, broken world. If you are someone who is pursuing a life of self-reliance, pursuing your own ability to live with integrity and compassion, then I, I want to give you a high five, a shout out, and all the support in the world. You are not wasting your time. 
even if you don't know exactly what or exactly when or exactly why, you are not wasting your time if you are trying. And the people who try are the ones who get criticized. The people who try are the ones who fall on our faces. The people who try are also the ones who get things done. We're also the ones who eventually stumble our way to more or less the place we were trying to get to. So I have my mother as an example in this. My mother, Carla Emery, who wrote the Old Fashioned Recipe Book, which became the Encyclopedia of Country Living. I, it occurred to me last night, I was chatting with my husband, that I might see that book sell a million copies in my lifetime. It's, it's around 850,000 now. I might sell, I might see my mother's book hit sales of a million copies. And for so long, she was the only one who believed in it. Nobody believed in that book except for her. And she just kept trying. She just kept muscling along, kept doing her thing, kept making mistakes, kept doing things wrong. But she wasn't wasting her time. She was just making her way to where she needed to be, to be a full expression of who she was and who she was created to be. So shout out to the Carla Emery's of the world and to those of us who are stumbling along and doing hard things. Your time is not wasted. You support me. I depend on you. I depend on your encouragement and I offer mine in return. We are doing healing work. We are fighting back against a culture that says we are inadequate. We are incapable. We are incompetent. We are reversing an illness, a disease that says that we can't take care of ourselves when in fact we can and we need to. So I say don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the mistakes. Don't be afraid of the wasted time. Don't be afraid of the burnt biscuits or the leggy tomato starts or, or whatever other thing goes wrong. Just don't be afraid because it's part of the joy and it's part of the process. And it's a part of being fully human and living the moments of our lives. It's part of getting to the end of this life and saying, I did the best I could. I'm Esther Emery. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you next week. No. And one of them is